How's it going, everybody? Hope everyone's doing well, staying safe as always. Um, a little bit about what I've been up to this week. <laughs> Honestly, I've been doing a lot of reading. So um, one book that I can recommend for you guys this week is Haruki Murakami's Wind Up Bird Chronicles. I think it's probably one of my favorite Haruki Murakami books. And I, I say that a lot, but I think this one's like this time for sure. Um, I would recommend this book uh, to anybody. And I think you'll definitely take something away from it. Especially just like a new perspective on life in general, especially during the pandemic. Um, it's a must read, I think. And I couldn't recommend it more. So beyond that, I went ahead and uh, chose William Grant Still for my composer report number four. So I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about William Grant Still and then um, kind of talk a little bit about the piece I pulled for you guys. So William Grant Still was born in May 11th, 1895, and he's actually considered one of the first African Americans to um, conduct a professional symphony orchestra and um, one of the first African American composers of an opera, ballet, and symphony and other noteworthy works. And he is most popularly known for his African-American symphony, Afro-American symphony, um, released in 1931. And a little bit more about that uh, time in his uh, career, he was pulling a lot of inspiration from the position that African-Americans were placed in uh, their current U.S. society at the moment in time. And he felt that he had an ability to kind of almost shine a light on the... Um, african-american perspective of um u.s culture and society so he went ahead and put that into a lot of the uh, works that he produced around that moment in time and all pretty much all throughout his career um he kind of, you can kind of hear that in the uh composition that i pulled which is three relaxation gaily um and you can kind of see how it's um, a derivative of like his own personal experience of being an African-American in the U.S., especially because um, this composition is pulled from the uh, symphony called Sunday Morning. And um, it has a lot to do with like an everyday, uh, uh, like a everyday circumstance, more like a Sunday circumstance, but an everyday circumstance and more or less like the... Um, the going ons and like what you were, what you would kind of expect, like the, the visual aspect of you kind of realizing like what it would be like being, um, you know, at Sunday service or, you know, just an average day as an African American, uh, on a Sunday. So I think that's kind of cool that he was able to do that kind of pull together, um, some inspiration behind his everyday, um, doings and going ons and, you know, put into like his work. So, um, I think it's really cool. I'll go ahead and explain this piece a little bit when I what I kind of heard from it. Um, this song starts with like a whimsical gallop. Um, there's a lot of repetition, repetition and there's a steady tempo used to keep the song uh, pretty well timed and consistent, which I think is like that like modern American like style that was really popular at the moment in time. Um, the variations for the songs come from the different instruments used throughout. It uh, starts with a flute which is like a, and a very tinny percussion. And as a song progresses, uh, you're introduced to a different family of instruments. And um, the, string uh, the string section has her turn to producing the stable home note for each repetition to come back to and satisfy the melody. And then they just do it all over again. So there's variation in repetition in um, the families of instruments that were used in the song, which I think is like a very like aesthetically pleasing aspect of this like song um i like this song relies a lot on the homophones since each family has their moment to add their flavor to the piece and bring about a different tone um around the middle of the song we were slammed with the the the, the brass section pro uh, providing the melody in a very robust manner they demand the presence in the forte and as a song draws to a close we are introduced with the same whimsical flute section playing out the movement with a familiar melody uh, where we started in the first place, which I think it's really cool that the song kind of brings you into like a full circle. As I listened to this movement, I couldn't help but imagine excitedly riding my bike through like a neighborhood, like on like a so, so, warm Sunday morning, um, and kind of just like having like the dew in the air, and like you can kind of just like imagine just like that like free feeling of being like 
back in your childhood or like a nostalgic moment of like you riding your bike just like without a care in the world and i feel like that that piece definitely like this piece definitely brought me back to like that moment in time in my life and i think like william grant still was really good at doing that with like a lot of the pieces that he produced um just like creating an everyday occurrence and making it almost just like so visceral in your head um just like using you know auditor auditory cues which i think is just like such a unique talent and especially for the moment in time i'm sure like it was just so much more astronomically impactful for um the people he was producing his music for um i think william grant still did an amazing job at catching the feeling of like optimism of like being maybe an oppressed people but uh people with an optimistic viewpoint and i think like um the whole symphony and like the the, the movements and um that are accompanied with relaxation all have a tinge of optimism and um a tinge of like um the ability of having curiosity and and really really reminding us to like hold the memories that we we cherish the most and um keep the people around us that we we cherish the most and that's kind of like a very very substantial like message that he was able to kind of like um convey just with instrumentals like he never used any um vocals or any words to really explain or describe a feeling but if it seems like william grant still had a very good grasp on being able to do that with the music he was able to like produce and um compose so i think he had he had a talent and honestly and truly i think he has a rightful spot in history as one of the most prolific composers in american symphony and um that's it for this <laughs> composition report so um thanks for listening and hopefully you guys are doing well like i said and uh, i'll catch you guys next week see you guys later